We're going to go over installation now, and that's how to install new bearings, a new coupler. If you get our new uh, high torque stepper motor, then you're going to need this coupler right here. The difference between these couplers, this one has three saw cuts in it, and it's good up to 10 uh, inch pounds of torque before it breaks. The new stepper motor, the new high torque, puts out more than 10 inch pounds of torque. So the new coupler does not have the three saw cuts in it. Uh, the alignment is dead on on our machine, so we really don't need that. Uh, and we definitely want to have a, a heavier duty coupler when we go to the high torque stepper motor. So for this install, we'll, ins we'll install the new coupler, new coupling, and the high torque stepper motor. For the reinstall, first you get your bearings. And it's easiest if you put one on a finger, bring it up inside. Get it aligned inside. Okay, and push that one into place. Okay, then we take this one and we put this one in place. All right, so we're good on both of those. Next, we take the coupler and we put the quarter inch shaft of the coupler through the bearings and it just sticks it sticks out just past the inner race of the outer bearing now we're going to mount the coupling and the and the stepper motor mount onto the end of the screw if this is the same screw that you're you're, you're reusing you don't have to reapply the uh, the loctite there's enough on there that it'll keep this preload nut from backing out uh, one very important point on the preload nut, if you put it on, on one side there's a counter bore, which we mentioned in the directions. That counter bore has to be facing towards the end of the screw because what it's going to do is it's just going to push on the inner bearing race right here. If you have it backwards, then it's going to lock up on the bearing entirely, and as you use the machine, when you change directions, it'll work this preload nut loose. So again, one side of the preload nut has a counter bore on it, the other side is flat, the counter bore side goes towards the end of the screw. I'm going to take the preload nut off. Okay. If this was a machine we just took apart and it had the Loctite on it still, it would not come off that easy. Uh, you'd have to work with it pretty good. Absolute worst case scenario is you get a rag and fold it up several times. Put it over the screw, hold on to the screw with a pair of pliers, and then using your using your 3 8 wrench, just work it off. And that should be enough to overcome the Loctite that's on there. Once you get it off, you want to take want to take an X-Acto knife and cut out all the old Loctite that was in there. When we put it back together this is to show how much Loctite you put on here. First we're going to put the preload nut back on and we're going to thread it back past where it needs to be. So I've got a quarter inch of solid thread showing here and the taper at the end of the screw. Alright, I'm going to put a drop of Loctite on my finger. I'm going to go back a little bit further on this. We'll go this way, and I'm going to just dab a little bit onto the screw. So if you look at this right now, you can see I've got Loctite on it, it's on the thread, and I've got a little bit on the taper, which is fine. And we're set to go right there. You don't want to get the Loctite into the bearing, which is you can actually because it's a sealed bearing. But if you get it onto the threads for the 540 screw, your coupler is going to be very hard to get off the next time you try to take it off. So we got our 540 screw in there. So now I'm going to mount the coupling back on. Get my 540 screw started into the end of the screw. It's easier to turn the screw 
than it is to turn the Allen wrench. And once you get close to the base, then use your Allen wrench. So right now, the screw's snug. So again, I look for my side hole for the coupling. I put my other Allen wrench in that. I lock it down. Okay, then using that access hole as, as counterforce, I uh, put my 3 8 wrench on it and I tighten it down good and tight. So that guy's set right there. Now we leave it in there and we bring the preload nut up against the bearing. So I'm going right up against it and just snug. If I pull my Allen wrench out, this guy spins free right now. Okay, this is actually, this is no preload taken up on the bearing at all. You want to have, you want to take, you want, it, it should have some resistance to it. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit more. And this is all a matter of feel. There's not a torque setting for this. So I bring it up again. Uh, yeah, we weren't even close. There we go. Now we're up against it. And I'm going to go just a hair past where Snug was. Now when I spin it, it's spinning. It's not spinning as free as it was. And I want to go just a hair tighter than that. All right. What I'm feeling for now when I tighten this up, if I, if I hear or feel any clicking noise, that means I tighten it up way too tight and I'm actually ruining the bearing. There's no, I can't feel any clicking noise. I don't see any clicking noise. Okay, and you can see it'll only spin a little bit there. So that's, that's looking good right there. That gets rid of all the backlash between the two bearings and we're set to go. And the Loctite will hold everything in place. This Loctite on the nut is basically just taking the place of a lock washer. We can't put a lock washer in there so the Loctite does it for us. So now we've got the preload set, the 540 screw inside, the coupling is nice and tight, and it's time to mount the, the stepper motor mount back onto the base, and then we'll put our high torque motor in it. So to mount the stepper motor, this entire um, assembly is now loose. I would go about that close, and then I would use the screw to actually bring it up to the end of the base, so you're not going to slam it. So you just turn the screw and gently bring it up to the base. So that's up close enough right there. Okay, now I'm going to put my 832 screws back in. This is done easiest with a Allen wrench that doesn't have a ball end. We'll just locate it. That one's in, and all I want to do is get it started in the hole and go in a few turns. I don't want to tighten it all the way down. Now I'll get the other one in. Once they're in, snug one side and snug the other side. Now what I want to do is I want to bring the saddle as far out as I possibly can and we'll loosen those two screws so that the stepper motor mount housing can align itself to the saddle. There's enough play in the, the holes to, to get this alignment dead on. You want to have the distance between the stepper motor mount and the end of the saddle as short as possible because that offers you the best alignment. If your saddle's all the way down here, that screw could be bent off a quarter of an inch and you would never know it when you put put it together at this end, at least not by feel. However, when you then move it closer to it, it's going to start getting tighter as it gets closer to the end of the base because the alignment is off. Yeah, that should be good right there. Okay, that one's loose. That one's loose. Got a little bit of play here. So basically, I'm just going to set it up in the middle there and lock it down. Here's your wrench so you can 
get some good torque on it. All right, so that guy's in place and that's all good. Now again, we're gonna find our set screw in the side of the coupler through the access hole. And you can actually see it when you've got the stepper motor off. Okay, we're engaged there. The stepper motor, when you put it back on, the next one is on the high torque stepper motors. These are hardwired. The original stepper motors had a plug-in, which comes out. Because the plug-in com can come out, that's why we zip-tied it to the fourth hole on the motor mount. You don't have to worry about that with this stepper motor. So we're going to put all four screws in and then align this. It can go in four different ways. Align it how you want it. Where do you want this cable to be sticking out? If it's sticking out of the top, it gets in the way. If it's on the bottom, it's going to get, you know, squashed here. So I would pick either side facing this way or side facing this way. This is the side that I would go with because your x-axis motor is going to be right here. And then your cabling come in, comes in and in one area of your machine you've got the cabling coming in for both axes. On the stepper the motor, this one has uh, flats on it as it came from the manufacturer. You want to turn the shaft so the flat is facing towards the set screw. So on this one I've got it facing towards me. You're going to stick it into the quarter inch hole on the coupling and into, it's got the, the bore on the motor, stepper motor mount right here is a clearance bore for this step right here on the stepper motor. So put your quarter inch shaft into the coupling and then make sure that you're all the way up against the stepper motor mount here. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my 832 screws in and again it's just going to go in snug. Get one started and don't even snug them down actually just get them started. If you only have three screws, you're fine. It's not going to ruin the deal if you only have three screws holding this on. That's plenty. Since we're not using a hole, I'm putting four in. If you want to zip tie this cord, you can too. That's all up to you. There's really no need for it. Now what I'm going to do, all four of those are in, so I know that I've got my screws all started. And I'm going to snug down the ones that are easiest for me to get to, these three right here. So now what that's done is it's locked this whole assembly together. And now what I want to do, actually what I want to do first is get my hand wheel off of this guy so I can put it on this one. Okay, I'm going to put the hand wheel on. This shaft on the, the new stepper motor is a little bit longer. Uh, it's going to stick out just a little bit on the end. What you want to do is you don't want it all the way up against the body of the stepper motor. You want it off just a hair, about 20 thou. So put it all the way up against it then pull it back a hair. And then you want to make sure that it's on the shaft. Right now I'm wiggling this as I'm tightening, tightening my set screw and the coupler down so I get it exactly on the flat. I don't want to have it so that it's, it's like this on the flat. It's got to be dead on the flat. So as you tighten it down slowly, it's wiggling and the more you tighten it down, the less it wiggles. So you're guaranteed to be directly perpendicular to the flat. Once I'm there, now I'm going to tighten this down. Okay, he's tight. And now I can get this guy on the flat too. Actually, let's put this back in. He was just, he was just snug. He wasn't tightened down all the way. Now I can keep this steady and I can wiggle this guy back and forth to get my set screw dead on the flat on this end for the hand wheel. Okay, so again, I'm against it. I pull it off about 20 thou and I start tightening it. So I'm loosening. There you go. All right. And that guy's good and snug. That guy's good. All right. And these guys are all snug. 
these guys are all nice and tight there we go so these guys get tightened first before you do your finish tightening on the side screw because that way if you tighten this one first then these aren't all the way up secure then what you're doing when you tighten these is you're putting load onto the stepper motor through the shaft so if you tighten this first and then you tighten the shaft through the coupling then your assembly procedure is correct nothing is binding nothing's got any kind of bad force on it and everything moves nice and smooth move it through the through a couple inches here make sure it all feels good okay and you're ready to go when you're turning this by hand make sure that this is unplugged this acts as a generator and will generate electricity back to the cord and possibly blow the fuse in your driver so make sure it's unscrewed whenever you're playing around with it next I would hook it up and actually jog it back and forth and make sure it all sounds good no bad hums or anything um, and you're good to go